listening to a special interview segment for the official podcast for WrestlingNewsSource.com. Okay, folks, joining us on the show this week, he is one half of the ROH Tag Team War Machine, the one and only Ray Rowe. Ray, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, guys. Oh, we certainly appreciate you coming on. You can follow Ray on Twitter at RaymondXRowe or on Facebook.com slash RaymondXRowe. You're going to be out at the Bustin' for Autism taking place July 12th out of the Pasadena Convention Center. They're going to be having a special meet and greet with all the superstars from 3 to 6 p.m. with bell time at right at 6. Proceeds are going to be going to a non- Nonprofit charity Bustin' for Autism. There's going to be special guests Colt Cabana, Alberto El Patron, Tommy Dreamer, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, Hernandez, many more. For all the details on that, go to clutchcityproductions.com or lonestarwrestling.com for tickets and further details. Now, you, Ray, you're going to be going up against Hernandez from uh, Lucha Underground, so it's, it's going to be kind of cool. It's going to be sort of a Ring of Honor versus Lucha Underground kind of matchup at this event. What are your thoughts on your opponent? I've known Hernandez for a while now, uh, multiple years. And I've actually wrestled him for the first time about six months ago in Pittsburgh, Ohio, or Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, before I ever moved to Texas. Um, and then I came to Texas five years ago, and I wrestled with him a lot in San Antonio. Now, he and I have both changed gears in our career since then. Um, you know, we're both, I'm a very different person and very different opponent than the one he remembers last. So if he thinks that that's the Ray Rowe that's going to step in the ring with him, he's going to be surprised in a very bad way. Um, I I know that Hernandez is very, very talented. He's a, he's a big, strong guy. But uh, I'm about 25 pounds heavier than the last time I was stepped in the ring with Hernandez, and I'm in the best shape of my life. So I hope, for his sake, that he brings his A game. Very cool. So it's definitely going to be one of those matches you can't afford to miss. It's going to be a great time. And uh, you can be seen regularly on Ring of Honor programming on all Sinclair Network stations and also on Destination America now on Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central. Uh, what was your reaction when you heard that Ring of Honor had been picked up by Destination America? Um, I'll tell you, that was a crazy day for everyone involved with Ring of Honor because that's uh – that announcement was guarded so closely that there were only three people in the entire organization that knew it was going to happen beforehand. I had so much social media outreach through Instagram, through, through Twitter, through Facebook, that my phone literally went from a full charge to, to dying in an hour. Wow. I, I was at the gym when, when the announcement happened. Or I was driving to the gym when the announcement happened, and my phone, my phone uh, you know, vibrated. I, I parked my car, I checked my phone, and I, and I was like, that the first the first picture I saw I was like that can't be real. <laughs> uh, I haven't heard anything about that. That can't be real. And then and then the text messages started and and my phone literally didn't stop vibrating. I had to turn it off, vibrate because it was vibrating so much. Um, and like I had something you know several hundred messages uh, in a matter of sixty minutes, and it just completely burned my phone battery. It was it was a crazy day, a yeah. crazy day, crazy good. You know it was, it was it was not a surprise that I was expecting. But uh, it's it's really really positive thing, and it's uh, it's really building momentum for Ring of Honor right now. Did you or anyone in the locker room feel a sense of okay, it's time to show what we've got, time to step up our game? When we heard the news, when y'all got on Destination America, knowing that there was another company on that channel. To be completely honest, it's not changing who Ring of Honor is. Uh, we're not really stepping up as much as we are doing the same thing we've always done. We're just now reaching a broader audience. Uh, we, if you've ever attended a Ring of Honor event, there isn't really an extra gear for these guys to go. <laughs> we are we are already performing at the absolute limits of of physical capacity. I mean, you know, guys are literally risking their lives every single night and hitting each other as hard as we as we possibly can uh, every single night, giving leaving every every ounce of themselves in the ring. So so what this Destination America does is doesn't change who Ring of Honor is. This just allows us to be seen, to be recognized, and to, to reach that many more people, people who haven't experienced the passion, haven't experienced the, you know, the, the, the magic, haven't experienced you know, the best wrestling on the planet. Now they're getting a chance to. Absolutely. And if you have not been to a, a live Ring of Honor show, awesome. Tyler and I can, can attest, it is absolutely amazing. You're going to have a great time. So fun. 
Uh, we went to uh, New Orleans during WrestleMania 30 weekend and got to go to all the Ring of Honor events, and it was just an absolute yeah. That was blast. A, that was a big weekend. That oh was yes. a big weekend. It was it was amazing. We had uh, such a great time, and I down I, I bought the DVD and everything of the event. It was it was great from SuperCard. But we have seen over the last few months, we've seen sort of a surge of wrestling talent appearing on uh, different promotions: New Japan, Ring of Honor, uh, Global Force, all you know, Lucha. Over the past few months. Plenty of them have stopped by Ring of Honor. Is there anyone that you preferably would like to see in Ring of Honor that you'd like to go up against? Uh, well, one guy who's in Ring of Honor currently who I would love to wrestle one on one is uh, AJ Styles. Oh yeah, he's a guy. He's a guy who I've never got a chance. I've been I've been involved now in in a couple different tag team situations with him. But I've never had the opportunity to go one on one with him, and right now he holds the IWGP Heavyweight Title, which to me is one next to the to the Ring of Honor World Title is the most prestigious titles in the world. So I'm counting AJ top three wrestlers in the entire world right now, and I want to see how I stack up. Um, I really, really want to wrestle AJ Styles one on one. The other guys that I want to wrestle uh, is actually a rematch. We started some unfinished business in San Antonio, and it's the Killer Elite Squad. Uh, oh, nice. We the the referee actually threw the, the match out because nobody was listening to the one in one out rule. <laughs> um, all all four of us were in the ring, and it, it went on for three or four or five minutes where we just continued wrestling and fighting and fighting and fighting, and the referee lost all control, and he threw the match out. Uh, nobody was ready to, for, for the match to end, us, the crowd, anybody. So nothing was resolved. We don't know who would have won that match because we were still halfway through the fight. Uh, so there's a lot of unfinished business. There's a lot of, you know, we have a lot of respect for KES and what they've done, but we think we're the better team. Uh, you know, they obviously think they're the better team. They've got some, some, some accolades in pro wrestling. Noah, they're the GHC heavyweight uh, tag team champions. They're the NWA world tag team champions. We don't have those accolades yet, and we want them. So, you know, it's kind of that, uh, that prison mentality. You walk, into the, you walk into prison the first day, and you go after the biggest guy. We <laughs> want KS, and we want him back. We want to show everybody exactly what we're made, you know, what we're capable of. Very cool. Yeah, you've teamed up with Hanson to form War Machine, gone on the destructive war path, so to speak. So, what's it like working with Hanson? Do y'all, you know, do y'all ride together uh, from show to show? You know, backstage, do y'all pal around? You know, is it more of a business meeting, or are y'all, you know, more pals? Uh, you know what? He's my he's my roommate on the road at Ring of Honor. Um, so you know, he's he's definitely a guy that and, you know, and when we're traveling between shows for Ring of Honor. Uh, we drive together. We, you know, we ride together. We're definitely always in the same car. Uh, he's, he's a guy who I've become friends with. I didn't know him before we both started with Ring of Honor in that, in that, uh, top prospect tournament, but he's a guy who's become one of my best friends. Um, which is really fortunate, uh, with the, with the business side of it, you know, being that, that we did form a tag team and we've got some success together. Uh, that, that to be able to do that with somebody who's such a good friend is really a blessing because that doesn't always happen. Um, you know, and he and I think very similarly about the business and about, uh, life and about what's important and priorities, you know, uh, neither one of us drink or smoke or do anything like that. So it's, it's, it's nice, you know, it's not a, it's not a clash of styles, it's not a clash of personalities. And when we, when we get in the ring, it's all business. So it really works out. Um, you know, we're, I'm fortunate to, uh, to have crossed paths when we did, it was kind of one of those right place, right time moments. And, uh, you know, we just, we hit the ground running together. How did your family react whenever you said that you wanted to become a professional wrestler? Were they supportive? Were they a little bit apprehensive? Because it's you know it's a tough business a to get into. It's a tough business on you physically and emotionally and mentally. You know, so your family's always got to look out for you and and make sure that their little boy is safe or you know their husband is okay when they're on the road. So how did how did your family take that news whenever you said I want to be a wrestler? Well, I mean. I've, I've, I've been involved in, in violent contact sports my entire life. So, and I've, and I've loved wrestling since I was literally five years old. <laughs> so I don't think it was that much of a surprise to my family that I was going to do something violent with my life. <laughs> um, you know, my, as far as my mom and dad goes, um, you know, my dad was, was really supportive. Uh, you know, he's been supportive through all my athletic stuff, you know, whether it was playing, you know, from, from the time I was playing t-ball to, you know, running track, throwing shot put, wrestling. You know, I started wrestling in, in fifth grade, and I wrestled through college. 
Um, you know, and, and I played football through middle school, high school, all that stuff. I mean, you know, I trained in MMA. I, I you know, I've, I've dabbled in boxing. I've, I've done some stuff, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of contact stuff. Uh, so I think with pro wrestling, it was just an extension of that lifestyle. Um, it was, I, you know, I was right place, right time. I got, I got involved in the business when I did. Um, you know, got around some really, really good guys and they took care of me. Uh, my mom always worries, you know, she's always scared that I'm going to get hurt or that, um, you know, something bad is going to happen, but she's supportive, you know, luckily I've, you know, you know, I'm 30 years old now, so I've been through several relationships, uh, romantically and, uh, not everybody has been as supportive as others. Uh, luckily the, the girl of my dreams, the girl that I'm with now, I've never met a more supportive person in my life. She is a hundred percent behind board, whatever I have to do crazy to prep for a show, whether it's, you know, my diet, my training regimen, my travel, anything. It's, it's just whatever you need, babe. You know, uh, I got you, whatever you need, you do what you, you do it. You do this because she knows it's, it's what I do and it's what my, what my passion is and it's what makes me happy. So that's, I, I, I cannot speak enough about how important that support system is for something like we do that's just physically demanding and is time, you know, time away from people and stuff like that. If you've got somebody at home who is giving you crap about it, you're not going to have a very long career. Being a wrestling fan, who has been your biggest influence in your wrestling career? Um, that's a complicated question. Uh, you know, obviously when I was five years old, I was a Hulk, I was a Hulkamaniac, you know, <laughs> uh, doing poses on demand. As I get a little older, I got into ECW. Um, you know, that was kind of booming right as I was in high school. Um, so, and you can see a lot in my style. I, I borrowed very liberally from Taz. Uh, you know, especially earlier in my career, I was actually known as the new suplex machine. Um, <laughs> it was just a, a very, you know, not very subtle uh, homage to uh, to the human suplex machine, um, you know, and and he, he was an amateur wrestling guy, so I have kind of gradu- gravitated towards amateur wrestling guys uh, as being my my idols, um, you know, my the guys I, I emulate, you know, so Taz, Kurt Angle, Brock Lesnar, uh, Bobby Lashley, guys like that who were you know big power athletic guys, and these were massive individuals, but they could wrestle, they could move, um, you know, Brock could do shooting star presses. He didn't yeah. always, but he had the athleticism to do it. So I, I tried to mold myself in that in that position because I can physically do a lot a lot of things that would kind of open people's eyes, um, you know, as far as aerial stuff. And it's just something that I don't need to pull out, so I don't. Um, and, and and you know, I, and I appreciate that athleticism, uh, guys. Further back, you know, uh, you got to love Stan Hansen and Terry Funk and, and you know, the Von Erichs and, and all the, the great wrestlers through, uh, through Texas. I mean, it's just the, 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 the people through here are amazing. So, but like big, big guys that I, I, I watch or I, I pay attention to are like Dr. Death, Stan Hansen, Vader. Uh, Bruiser Brody, Terry Funk. I watched nice. a lot of their Japanese stuff and just, you know, and I'm, I'm amazed at what they were doing at the time they were doing. Uh, this this next one is sort of a two part question. Uh, we do we do tend to we like to ask these kind of questions. One, what would be a fantasy match that you would like to watch between two wrestlers, past or present? And another one would be who would you like to face, past or present? That would be a fantasy match for you. Um, who I'd like to see wrestle right now. Um, one of the guys that I'm the biggest fans of right now watching is Kyle O'Reilly. Um, from Ring of Honor. I mean, I don't know if you are watching his current stuff, but he is performing at such a high level that it's 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 literally insane. Like I watch him, and and he's he's a guy that I have a lot of respect for, and I just I can't I, I can't process some of the things that he's able to do, some of the magic he's able to create in the, in the ring. So I would love to see him go, you know, uh, a thirty minute Iron Man match with AJ Styles. You know, just go out and and just and just shine. Uh, I'd love to see him wrestle um, Okada. Uh, I mean, it's 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 you know stuff like that. Like I, I think those matches would be amazing. Uh, you know, he just competed in the Best of Super Juniors, and I don't know if you saw him versus Kushida for the finals. Um, but if you like wrestling, go watch Kyle O'Reilly versus Kushida in the main event. And I know we're asking you know fantasy matches. <laughs> that is a fantasy match. Like you will, you will literally not be the same wrestling fan after you watch that match, um, as as you were beforehand. So anytime you can see that matchup, 
I would I would I would say that should top anybody's fantasy list. Uh, past, you know, who I would like to wrestle from the past. Um, I would love to get in the ring with, uh, like I said, Stan Hansen or or, or Doctor Dusty Williams or, or Terry Funk. I think uh, any one of those guys would just be amazing from a tag team standpoint. I think uh, War Machine versus the Steiner brothers mm-hmm. in you know in their in the their their Japan days you know in the in the in the early, late 80s early 90s mm-hmm. yeah. when they were when they were just killing people uh or you know the uh the AWA Road Warriors Ooh. versus War Machine would be uh would be some some crazy crazy matches I'd pay to see that <laughs> Yeah man uh, yeah that'd be awesome Now we do, we, we do have to talk about uh, your motorcycle incident. You know, unfortunately, okay. you did suffer a motorcycle injury back in August. You were out for for several months. Uh, you were even told by doctors that you would never wrestle again. Uh, you know, and for any wrestler, you have to take that under extreme consideration. Did did at any point you think your career was actually going to end, or did that did that say to you, you know, I'm going to drive to push through this rehab. I'm going to get back in that ring. I don't care what these doctors think. Well. Well, uh, before I answer that, there was actually a more serious thing said to me than you'll never wrestle again. The doctor looked at me dead in the face and said, I don't know why you're alive. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so he said, like, like medically, I cannot explain to you how you survived your accident. That's crazy. That kind of puts some things in perspective. Absolutely. Uh, then, then the first surgeon I went to said that I'll never wrestle again. I went to a second surgeon who was... Uh, you know, a guy who actually worked on some WWE guys, and uh, he said that he could put my arm back together, and he thought I had a realistic shot of being back in the ring in 8 to 12 months. Hmm. And, um, you know, if I did everything right, and I had full clearance at, at five months. Wow. And, I had my fir- and I had my first match six months and one day from my accident, or from my surgery. Uh, no, 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 wait, I'm sorry, from my accident. Six months and one day from my accident. That's absolutely so, insane. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, he said he said typical typical um recovery time was, was eight to twelve months. And he said realistically for me to be, you know, back to being whole would be probably you know, nine nine to twelve months realistically. And mm-hmm. uh, I had full clearance at five and was back in the ring at six. Um it was uh, I I was very, very fortunate. Um, that I had had the support system I did because it was definitely the lowest point of my life. You know, you ask if there were times where I thought it was all over. There were times where I really questioned whether or not I was ever going to be whole again. To, to go from somebody who's who's literally in their athletic prime, uh, in their you know best shape of their life, doing you know living their dreams, to not be able to do things like take your shirt off, mm. not be able to do things like tie your shoes or take a shower. Um, you know, it, it was it was incredibly humbling and depressing, and you know, if I didn't have the people around me in my life at the time, I, I wouldn't have been able to make the recovery that I did. Um, you know, my my girl was actually uh, we were together then, and and she was over every single day, making sure I could eat, making sure I took a shower, making sure that I had what I needed. You know, I. Uh, I, I had my little brother Shane Taylor around, um, who, as soon as I was able to rehab, or as soon as I was able to start going to the gym, we were in the gym six to seven days a week, every single week. Before I could drive, he would pick me up and take me to the gym, um, you know, and we would go. He, uh, I had, uh, and the other guy that I had who who was instrumental in this was Jack Bank. Jax was checking on me every day. Anytime he was in town, we lifted together, we worked out together, we we ate together. Um, you know, and uh, Jax is my roommate now. So, and he's actually just gone through. He just tore his tricep, and he's going through his own rehab. So now I get to literally return the favor for what he did to me during my recovery. So I'm taking him to the gym, and we're working together, and, and dieting together, and training together. It's uh, it's all come full circle there. Very cool. Always nice to have that support. You know, it's it's. It, it's uh, unbelievable what a support system can actually do for a person. You, you, yes, sir. you just can't explain it. And, uh, you know, we certainly appreciate your time. We are certainly glad that you're still here with us. Uh, there's got to be a reason for it. And it's, you know, you're, you're affecting other people's lives uh, by telling that story and, you know, going out there and showing this is what happens if you don't give up. You go back out there and 
You know, you rehab harder than you thought you could. You push yourself a little bit further than you thought you could, and you, you end up waking up the next day and and the next one and the well, further and, one. And and the recovery, the recovery has has actually, uh, and and the accident, all the whole process has actually, uh, you know, for social media savvy as everybody is, it spawned a hashtag, and and I use that in the ring. It's now a moniker, uh, and it's hashtag hard to kill. And and I'm now announced as hard to kill Raymond Rowe <laughs> uh, because I, I literally am. It's difficult to to to, to end my life, I guess. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's it's something that started during the recovery process, and it's just carried through to the ring. So it's you know I use it to to remind people what I went through and exactly what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. You know, um, if you uh, if you don't give up, you 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 are hard to kill. Your will is hard to kill. Absolutely, and we're very glad that you're here with us, and we're going to get to see you on July 12th out at the Pasadena Convention Center for the charity event, Bustin' for Autism. Again, they're going to be having a special meet and greet, 3 to 6 p.m., bell time at 6, proceeds going to the charity, Bustin' for Autism. Plenty of special guests. Make sure you go to clutchcityproductions.com or lonestarwrestling.com for tickets and further details. Raymond Rowe, it has certainly been an honor, a pleasure. We certainly appreciate your time. All right, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good night. Later, man. Bye-bye.